Hello and welcome to the Bankers Tech Talk series, uh, looking at all things at FinTech. We're filming on location at Mars Discovery District in Toronto. I'm Joy McKnight, Deputy Editor at The Banker, and I'm joined by Corey Gross, CEO of Sensibil. Corey, thanks so much for joining us today. Appreciate you having me. Can, can you tell me a little bit about what Sensibil does? So Sensible allows banking customers to keep track of their item level expenses by capturing receipts through their mobile banking application. They can use it for expense management, they can use it for household budgeting, even if you need to you know, find a receipt to make a return or claim a warranty. Okay, and you have this data insight tool called Pulse. Right. What can banks get out of that? So the idea behind Pulse is that we're capturing a lot of new purchase information about customer spend, and what Pulse does is it allows them, it allows FIs to segment their customer base based on things like life stage events, uh, lifestyles, because of what they're purchasing. Because banks typically only get very high level information about customer spend, where they're shopping, when. But now if you shop at a place like Shoppers Drug Mart or Walmart or Amazon, we can determine whether or not they're buying groceries or apparel or electronics, and that might inform things like life stage events, which are relevant uh, for banks to be able to target customers more appropriately. Okay, and as a fintech, do you consider yourself to be a disruptor or an enabler for banks? Uh, yeah, on day one, this was, uh, philosophically we believe that you know, financial institutions, especially the incumbents, are in the best position to serve customers with the uh, most relevant financial services products. They have the trust, they have the capital and resources to build services and product offerings um, that can meet the needs of customers. And so from day one we were a company that wanted to uh, align, with that, um, uh, align with that strength and be able to provide them tools to better service their customers. So absolutely we're an enabler and um, so far it's done well for us. What's very interesting though is that sort of the banks have now started to really reevaluate how they're procuring you know, uh, services or products from fintechs. What have been your major challenges when working with the big banks and how have you overcome them? I'd say early days, banks were unprepared to work with earlier stage companies. We're used to working with Accentures and Deloitte's, large companies that they already have master services agreements with. And so when you uh, start working with a smaller company that only has a 10, 20 person team, don't have the resources to rigorously negotiate master services agreements over 10, 12 months time, it kind of catches them off guard. They're used to negotiating one way in a very and sometimes adversarial process. Um, how we uh, overcame that is that I think we got in at the right time where there was a bit of a sense of urgency for adding new services that uh, would, would meet customer uh, needs. And so, um, you know, being able to uh, be amenable to taking your draft of an MSA versus starting from an old software licensing agreement. So there was, there was a bit of a, a, a tug and, and, and push early on just to kind of get on the same page in terms of how these agreements should be structured. But over time, I think banks have become a lot more uh, comfortable and a lot more used to working with smaller companies and their procurement has adjusted accordingly. Okay. And earlier this year, Sensible raised $17.3 million um, funding. Yep. Uh, what is the funding like, uh, the situation like in Canada? Um, and, you know, is there enough funds available for fintech startups? Uh, I, I would say absolutely. Uh, I think that uh, the, the thing in Canada is if you have the right solution, the right team, and you're playing in the right market, money is there for you, right? You've just got to ultimately demonstrate that you have the ability to turn that capital into, into something very valuable and, and hopefully build a sustainable long-term uh, business. And so absolutely, there's funding available here. We have investors that are Canadian. We have investors that are American from Silicon Valley. But um, I would say our largest investors are still those uh, right in our backyard. Um, Canada obviously is very familiar with uh, financial services at scale because we have a big five banking system. We are investing a lot of money in things like artificial intelligence and seen companies uh, in Canada and Toronto very recently raise a whole whack of money. So I think the money is here. Uh, there's certainly not as many VCs. There's not as many private equity people. But if you have that right mix of team, market opportunity, and uh, a track record with a proven product or traction, uh, you'll be able to attract funds. Excellent. Thank you so much for your insights, Corey. Appreciate it.